Hello, KI4DBK here. Um, recording a video that's primarily made for W2AEW. Um, what you're looking at is my Hewlett Packard 652A test oscillator. It's a nice signal generator. Um, I picked it up at a ham fest for really cheap. I think I gave 25 for it. And uh, I noticed that they're still worth. Um, a little bit of money and it puts out a really clean sine wave seems to uh, it's got a nice attenuator and um, goes all the way up to uh, at least uh, 10 megahertz and uh, I've got a frequency counter hooked up um, and currently I am at the uh, times 10k setting. Uh, you can see that it's not perfectly calibrated, at least my dial on the vernier is not uh, perfect, but uh, it's still very useful. Uh, I've also got, um, here's where I have the test leads hooked up, I, I have the frequency counter attached going out from the 50 ohm output, and I've got a cheap uh, Velleman personal scope connected and you can see I've got the marker set um, for 20 kilohertz or the reading is showing 20 so that's agreeing as far as it can with the uh, frequency counter when I first started I noticed it was around um, uh, 20k and 14 hertz or so it seems to have walked down a little bit uh, closer to where I wanted it and to the left of the scope I have my uh, ICOM R10 communications receiver and it makes a neat little uh, test set, RF test set, so let's turn it on. Go ahead and go on up to about 2 megahertz. I should have gone with a larger step size on this, but we'll get there some someday. Here we go. Okay, it looks like we're about zero beat, and now we're going on to the other side band. So that was just a stubby duck on here, and I probably could have had a dummy load and would have worked just as close to it just as well. But that's just a little fun demonstration. But uh, yeah, I was just wondering if you had any ideas as to calibration, or maybe it might, might be just as well to use it as is. Um, let me go back down. Uh, this Velleman scope doesn't have, uh, it's not very fast, it only goes up to I believe 1 megahertz or a little over. But moving the vernier on this, we can see that um, it's jumping because it's on auto. Let's go back to manual control. Apologize if I'm shaking the camera too much. Okay, that should be, okay, well, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's a pretty nice little unit. And I was just wondering if you, you know, like I said before, if you thought it would be worth actually opening it up and trying to... Uh, mess around with uh, calibration. I did I did open the top cover because um, actually the plastic cover on the uh, on the DBM meter and voltage meter 
was actually receding on one side into the machine and it wasn't making good it wasn't snapping to a position on the left side so I ended up having to super glue it used a bit too much glue I'm gonna have to carefully grind that off or uh, polish it some way or another if I want it to look good or maybe I'll just leave it but I guess that I used a bit too much glue but uh, other than that it seems to be working um, I did notice another thing I need to show you I'm glad I remembered going back down to the 10 Hertz position and uh, let's see can you see this uh, okay and then you see on the frequency counter I've got it on the Hertz gate time the slow gate time and it seems to be pretty stable and accurate on this range but then when you get up beyond the audio and into the RF range let's see 1k starts to lose some accuracy jump up to 10k I guess it's uh, losing a little more that's the 100k setting and then the 1 meg setting so you change gate time on the frequency counter yeah so now we're uh, starting to get a little bit out of calibration but it's still as long as you compensate dial it up to where you want it it's pretty useful regardless of um, imperfection in the calibration so I don't know maybe you're more familiar with this unit than I am uh, I haven't found the manual yet haven't really had time to look for it but I need to do that because I'm not even sure I guess it was made in the 70s or perhaps before but it's very well built on the inside it uses uh, metal gears and the attenuator on the inside is totally encapsulated in uh, what looks like an aluminum or steel cylinder totally shielded very nice and I liked that about it and uh, looked like it had high quality potentiometers and uh, air variables were really nice in it um, the main uh, the main dial the vernier here is uh, incredible it's uh, it has a large ganged air variable cap that looks nice and it was very clean on the inside so I hesitate to um, mess around with anything in there uh, seeing as how it's working this well so uh, any type of response would be great if you have a similar piece of uh, test equipment I would love to see it um, maybe you do and you already have it I haven't seen all 53 of your videos yet I guess I've only seen uh, about five or ten, but uh, either way, uh, I thought you might appreciate this. Seventy-three.